The Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. Gosh. We have a special guest Can in I just the say, studio. He's yeah, back, yeah. everybody. The Ruben room has K. just gotten so much more classically beautiful. Yeah, well, there was a fair bit of room to move. Hi, Ruben. Ruben, welcome back. What a pleasure now, to be here. We're looking yeah. at you in the security cameras as you arrived, and mm. I said, you walk in with the the, the presence and the power of a actress from Dynasty. Oh, well, that's the Is myth. that what you're going for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're the same I really get into the Perth spirit here. <laughs> right. By the way, the car you sent for me today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know who you sent, but they picked me up in a car that was so old it voted no. <laughs> yeah, that was, the air, it was an old beat-up Volvo from 1927. The air con was just a Swedish man blowing in my face. <laughs> not and for the not first time. Was, the was there a box of tissues at the back? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? I'm an artist. But don't you? I wonder what is the age where you decide that you need a box of tissues on the back, uh, mm. uh, the very back of your car. Oh, oh, that um, depends where you work from. Sean, Sean still needs them on his lap. <laughs> because think yeah. about it. Because well, that's, you, where I have them, that's common courtesy. That's where the Uber driver should have them, really. Because how else am I meant to pay for the ride? Because whenever you're driving near an old person who's got the boxes issues at the back of the car, it's like, why are they at the back? If you need one, you can have to stop the, the car. Where the as well. Well, they're also meant to be where the mints are and possibly a bottle of water. Yeah. I once had I once had a threesome in the back of an Uber driver with the Uber driver because he came back. He came kind of. He, he, he came in to join. Yeah, of course. I'm a communist. And <laughs> and um, <laughs> in practice. And then at the end, uh, he said, hey, do any of you, either of you have a tissue? And I'm like, babe, this is your it's, Uber. Yeah. We should have had mints and water. <laughs> so I cancelled the ride. <laughs> oh, you cancelled it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sucking your dick and paying. <laughs> Raymond, did you check your uh, ratings afterwards? Yeah, and that's what did right. you get? Stella. <laughs> Five, Five stars. stars. So, oh, you so. Same so, fingers. Ha- so how does, I want to know the mechanics of it. So you're in the Uber. How does this whole thing come with, about? With another person, presumably. Yeah, so, so what happened? So Give us a- I didn't have a fan, so I had to pick up any old trash. I saw you um, yeah, getting that off the receptionist desk. Yeah, I could. Just a little closed sign for with you With our three. faces yeah, on it. I know. Um, no, I was in the back seat with a lovely gentleman mm. uh, who was a medical professional because I want to leave the world the same way I came into it, crying and being spanked by someone with a medical degree. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, and we were having some fun and the Uber driver sort of made some noise and I thought he was going to be something homophobic. I thought it was going to be, yes. a, do you mind stopping or something? And I, I was in London at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't been in London for years. Last time I was in London was like when the Queen died. Yeah. If you want something done. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's be a call. Uh, and I thought he was going to say something like a slur or ask us to get out, which sometimes happens. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yes. And then he just turned and went, uh, and I, I preempted. I went, oh, do you want us to stop? And he went, no, I'd I, I, like, you, you can keep, keep going. You're kind of quite cute. And I was like, oh, oh, well, maybe oh. you should pull over and get in the back seat with us. Yeah. Is there I enough mean, room in the back seat? It's and a, a Prius. three grown man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but luckily, it's very luckily economical. For, for moments like this, I had my hamstrings removed. <laughs> I, d- I get a lot more fuel to the gallon. Sure. Well, the other was question is... Was that I, don't, I was really, it was like really, bigger than really. motorplex. Ruben, because you're busy at the time, how much did you give a chance to, you know, do the once over at the glance of the Uber driver? Because you don't just want to invite someone into the Babe, free man. That's why you have the headshot on the app. Oh! So you want to keep cancelling until a hot one rolls yeah, yeah. up? <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> It's exactly it. So I, my Uber rating's five, but I won't be driven by less than a nine. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, talk, let's talk about the worldwide controversy oh, of your please. of your a guest it. appearance on the project. <laughs> now, was that mid last year? When yes. Was that? Yeah. Yes, it was. No, actually, it was a year, almost a year. It was around oh, it was February. It was so, this is, yes. okay. so this yeah. is crazy, yeah. right? So I watched that live, and yeah. when I watched it, I, I all I did was, oh, that's Ruben. And like yep. I didn't take offence. So granted, I'm not very religious yeah, um, yeah, yeah. at all. But how many people yes. who are very so religious what are watching the project well, for starters? I, so, so the people that don't realise something was said, um, and we won't repeat it <laughs> because people have. But it's actually quite that. a clever joke. It's a very it's clever a, joke yeah. to do with Jesus. Can I say it is? At in essence, it's a little pun. It yes. is. It's actually a bit like a dad joke. It's really yes. innocent. And considering some of the things I've said in my life, yes. and some of the things I've said on your fine program, oh, yes. yeah. it is like a, today, like, <laughs> like five minutes ago, <laughs> when I made a joke about being fisted by an Uber driver. <laughs> it is on the... Sorry, um, was that a joke? The paler, well, every bit of joke has a little seed of truth. <laughs> uh, it... It's on the tamer end of the things I say, so I really didn't think anything of it. Also, it was a joke I had been telling for 
Years. Yes. Years. I had newer jokes. Yes. I got newer and it was jokes. just a throwaway for you, yeah, wasn't it? Was very, it? it was very light. I actually think I was... I put it on there. So like, oh god, I don't say this yes. joke anymore. I can burn this. Yeah, that's right. Never have to say it again. And now I'm like Bart Simpson. People are like, do the thing, Bart. Yeah. Do it again. Uh, and it. Um, uh, my personal opinion here is that yes, it might not have been the best platform for the joke. I.e., an earlier time slot that I'm used to occupying, which is yep. why I'm on a breakfast show sure. now. Sure. Yes. Uh, but the. I also think there was a lot of people who were homophobic, who wanted mm. an excuse yes. to lash back after oh, Mardi Gras. Sure. Because you under the cover of religion. Yes. Under the cover, because you can't fight back against Mardi Gras because it's such a big earner for the state. It has yeah. such high profile yeah. and it was world pride. Yes, I think there was an element of, not everyone, but I think there was an element mm. of people going, we're going to use religion yes. as a Trojan horse for our bigotry. Yeah. Because also jokes like that have been told by straight comics oh, for years. Ad infinitum. So Absolutely. I, I think this is about How far did it yeah. reach? Because Nathan said, did it get inter international? Like you, you got a bit of coverage around oh, yeah. the place. I've so, just been back in, I've been in London and people are still Oh yeah, the Daily Mail so would have been all over People hitting sure. you up on Instagram or, or socials, having a go at you from other countries. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Isn't that... You know what? It's very oh, funny. My dad's Russian. So some, when I first, sometimes I, and there are, sometimes there are a lot of really great Russian artists and creators who get into my DM. So I see the Cyrillic alphabet, their alphabet yes. quite often. And I, so I don't, but I don't really know what it means. Yeah. But I can tell by the emojis. <laughs> <laughs> It was really the emojis changing that told me, oh, I think this is coming from a nastier place. Yeah, oh, wow. wow. Um, yeah, but so, you know so, what? Also, you're not doing something... How do I put this? You know you're doing the right thing when you're pissing people off. Yeah, that's right. Well, um, yeah, because you're not part of just... You're not white noise. Yeah. And people also, are listening to what you're saying and they're reacting. But I want to know, like, I've never spoken to someone that has had something like a scandal breakout from something that they said. What, how, when did you know... That it was going off the rails. Um, like, wait, so, wait, 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 was when was the first message you went? Oh, wait, there. What's? I think the first time I noticed was a Daily Mail article pop up, maybe a few hours after. <laughs> yeah, and it it said something along the lines of, blah blah blah, must apologise. Oh, okay. Oh. And I went, oh. well, that's mm, not going to happen. That's interesting. No, well, I'm not going to apologise for that. Um, but then uh, there was a hashtag apologise Ruben. So oh, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Which I'm like, and here's the best part, less than 100 posts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. And so, that, yeah, when they write the big stories and everybody thinks, oh, 10,000 people object. No, it's like a true. couple, it's a Actually, handful. What I did notice, I did notice this, when Fred Nile collapsed at a protest about me and the project... <laughs> And then my agent said... What do you think that was God striking you down? Oh, said, if you manage to take out Fred Nile with one joke, you might actually be Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I think I think you might be. Now, Ruben, you were mentioning just before about your dad, right, and the Russian yep. um, background. So the show that you're doing for us at Fringe over here in the next couple of weeks, yep. you've got some background. Mate, what are you pulling the piss out of show, Europeans or what? This show is nuts. I've been researching this show for about three years and getting um, information from Berlin, from Russia, from Poland. I have a family tree that needs a Netflix series, if anyone yeah. from Netflix mm. is watching. But this particular story is about my uncle, who was a clown and a comedian in East Berlin. Yeah. And then went... And East Berlin, if you don't know, was like a walled-in, oh, yeah. occupied... Yeah. Yeah. State fascist police state masquerading as a benevolent leader, which is of course totally unthinkable yep. today. Yes, <laughs> we've yes, never seen it? anything uh, like completely it. Completely unthinkable. Right? I don't know what yes. you're talking about. Uh, Luckily, and- we've learned from history. <laughs> And he managed to be a clown in this really violent, untrusting, panic-stricken time. And then he tried to tra- He tried to escape several times. He traded a, a banjo and some harmonicas yep. to uh, an American soldier for his uniform and gun. Wow! And he just and tried then hopped to in walk- a car with twenty of his clown friends. <laughs> Well, he tried. He tried to walk through a checkpoint, but he spoke no English. Oh. And I was like, this is how I know I love this man, because my uncle Helmut is his name. Yeah. Uh, 
could think he could take down a fascist regime with just a costume and yes. panache. Yes. <laughs> and then later on... The apple know, doesn't a, fall far from the tree. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I, I can't, this is a bit of a spoiler, but I don't care. It's so good. He, did, he ended up getting thrown out of East Germany because he made himself a nuisance. Oh, wow. Which, which is, is what he was trying to get to happen anyway. I just think it's the most Australian rebellion I've ever yes. heard yeah. of. Isn't that amazing, though, Addition. for you to not know that and you have those elements that with you, within oh. your character and then look back that far and, and go, oh, my God, that's it's a family it's genetic. thing. It is genetic. <laughs> but here's the, here's the big kicker. He always hated the West, hated capitalism. He would have found me excessive. Me excessive. Yes. Oh, right. imagine. And then... Suddenly, he starts liking hang gliding and he starts um, <laughs> loving fast cars yes. and has a high fancy, lots of money, starts living a high life. And we're all there in Australia being like, Who is where's the guy? money coming yeah. from, mate? Where's the money coming from? He was robbing banks. <gasps> oh, yes. As a clown? As a, dressed in a Groucho Marx pair of glasses and nose, which considering you already had a huge nose, a moustache and was bald... Wasn't much quite, of a disguise. Wasn't, yeah, yeah. That's so but funny. the bank tellers loved him because he was so cute and polite and funny. They were like, oh, here he comes again. And he'd rob the same bank twice in a day. It's nuts. It's oh a crazy my story. So oh, my God. How it has, polite back then. It has such yeah. a great title, this show, too. Tell over the title. Apocalyptic. That's yes. so you must, have, you must have just high-fived yourself when yeah. you thought of that. No, it just happened because I can't spell. Yeah. But <laughs> I love it anyway. And then we've got the dirtier version of the show as well. The, we um, the, the K-hole. The K-hole. Google it. Don't press image, sir. <laughs> uh, the K-hole is what I call late night done right. It is fast. It is sexy. It is loose. It is fucking hilarious. It is my favourite acts of the fringe all coming together. And I tell them all the same thing. I say, get angry, get drunk, get naked, get on stage. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. It's loose. It is a time. And I'm so excited. Every time we come, it is a raging party. I am wearing an outfit which could barely be described as fabric. Right. Are you going to be catching an oh, Uber Jesus. home from that performance? I'm going to be catching anything I can. <laughs> Five stars, you heard it yeah, here first. Definitely uh, no, if you don't mind, I've got to go. I've got to go get my next COVID vaccine. I have it in the forehead, purely out of habit. <laughs> <laughs> Go to RubenK.com for tickets to either Apocalyptic or The K-Hole or both. Why wouldn't you double that up? Oh, Ruben no. K, it's always a joy to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Ruben. Absolute Thanks, pleasure. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.